16. Now, as BNP is poised to settle its sanction violations lawsuit with the U.S. and with the case against Barclays' alleged dark pool dealings just beginning, joining us live from Zurich is Dr. David Costa, professor at Robert Kennedy College. Uh, Dr. David Costa, good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Mark. Do you think an $8.9 billion fine is fitting of the crime? Well, obviously, a nine billion uh, fine is it's quite substantial, and uh, it certainly represents uh, a situation where banks have to be very careful and have to act very quickly on turning page to what was their past in the pre-2008 scenario and era. So it is quite a substantial uh, fine in this case. But what I'm more concerned about in this case on BNP Paribas is uh, the, the, the new type of punishment, which is now this ban uh, potentially for six months to a year. And that's where I am a bit more concerned of what would be the ramification of this ban, which is a new form of punishment. What do you think the ramification will be, David? Do you think the bank will lose clients? By the way, it's worth noticing that, according to a person familiar with the matter, BNP will have six months to prepare for this ban on handling certain dollar transactions. That's according to one person we've spoken to at Bloomberg. But looking beyond that, do you think that it could lose clients because of this ban? Yes, yeah, certainly. The first damage we have here is a reputational damage, and uh, the logistics of uh, changing to another old source, in the sense of the clearing to another bank, uh, require a bit of time. So it's certainly good news they would have six months to prepare. But in terms of reputational damage and having to go to another partner to, to clear could potentially lead to lose uh, uh, a part of the business that they're actually running. So yes, that I think is one of the ramifications, which is more of, uh, in this new form of punishment, of the less predictable ramification where traditionally a fine you pretty much know where you stand because you have to pay the amount and then sort of you can turn page immediately. David, French officials have warned against levying disproportionate fines that could harm not only France's economy but Europe's banking system as well. Do you think, do you think that's the case? Do you believe that or not? I don't think the, the ramifications are that big. I don't think it's, uh, I mean, this is part of the diplomatic uh, relationship to really try to, in this point, was part of the strategy to negotiate a, a lower penalty, which is, again, is a very substantial penalty, which we haven't seen before on similar situations for sanction. Uh, so I don't think this would be a systemic implication of this fine, and even on the clearing ban, which in terms of financial implications for BNP would be very limited. So the change on the clearing isn't something this substance which will impact the bank is more about the indirect uh, potential penalties here but I don't think there will be so much modification for other banks and I don't see how this will impact the system as a whole if not positively because another bank is turning page and is ready to move on with a, with a clean slate. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, David? You're saying post-2008, the banking landscape's changed and banks need to be able to move on, distance themselves from events that took place maybe before 2008 or in recent years. But another bank that fight, that's finding that remarkably difficult is Barclays. As we know, the New York Attorney General says that uh, it, it lied to customers, it, uh, it masked the role of high-frequency traders uh, within its dark pool. I mean, some banks are really finding it difficult despite the CEO, Anthony Jenkins, pledging to, to, to draw a line in the sand. It is indeed difficult, especially for new CEOs who just take the role now and have to deal inevitably with the things of the past. But the situation in Barclays Dark Pool is entirely different. We have a number of allegations, a number of uh, potential issues, but we haven't really found out enough to be able to draw a conclusion whether this really happened or, or to what degree it happened, if it was an isolate, isolated case or if it's more of a, um, uh, of a spread practice throughout Dark Pool. So it's quite early to say, but I would say, yes, it is indeed difficult for banks to, to to, to, to change page, but that's part of the new challenge of the moment, and our banks have to be competitive. And so it's part of the new normal, and it will take still a bit of time. Banks are still working on it on several fronts. They have uh, challenges, and it's all about how do you really deal with those challenges and remain competitive in what is the marketplace, the banking marketplace today, and not the pre-2008 one.
And David, on, on, on the Dark Pool episode, I mean, how much damage do you think this could do to the reputation of Dark Pools in their entirety? Not just Barclays Dark Pool, but uh, the industry of Dark Pools. Well, there are two ways to look at it. If you look at it uh, from one standpoint, uh, you could say that having a less regulated market where pretty much a third of off-exchange transactions now are uh, of, of transactions in, in equities are off-exchange, having a, a less regulated market where you transact uh, is not a good idea in the post-2008 environment because there is uh, less transparency inevitably. On the other side, you have to look at what is the real benefit that the participants in the dark, dark pool are, are receiving. And if the benefits are weight, what are the incidents that could happen for, due to this lower regulation, they will continue to, to exist in a form or another. So I don't think the damage is that big, but much depends on how big was the malpractice here, if any. David, great to chat to you. Thanks for joining us today. Dr. David Costa, their Dean and Collegiate Professor at Robert Kennedy College in Zurich. Still to come, the UK's banks in